right, welcome to another Cooking with Captain Ed. This one here is going to be a follow-up to the live stream I did a few weeks ago uh, where we were graced with the presence of Mr. Sinister Gates from Avenged Sevenfold. Um, one of the most, uh, <laughs> one of the biggest things I did wrong there, uh, I had Sin there, we were demoing his cabinets a little bit while talking about the Axe FX. He was kind of the impetus for the conversation and uh, never played a single stitch of Avenged Sevenfold. Not a uh, rhythm, not a lick, not a nothing. So what I'm going to wind up doing now is answering a few questions that I missed or didn't get to in the in a live stream. And then I'm going to follow that up with um, just a handful of different feeling licks from Avenged Sevenfold. Going through first um, one of the stock cabinets uh, then a, um, the cabinet that I was using from the ML Labs Zilla bulb pack, which was a 2x12 Zilla cabinet, um, uh, mic'd and, and um, created by uh, Misha Mansour from uh, Periphery. Uh, and then I'll go into the Boner, which is a Bogner and the Hellwin cabs from Sin. Uh, now with all of these, I'm keeping the amp settings the same. I'm using my basic heavy rhythm sound, which is based on the 5150 Mark III blue head. Um, and I'm using a Royer 121 ribbon mic, which is my preferred mic. So I've set up all the cabinets to use the same mic, to use the same amp, so you can see the difference. As I'll say when we get there, the sound can be very, very different. And I want you to understand before I get into that, that my 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 tone is tuned now to the Hellwin. It's probably going to sound best through the um, the the bulb, the the Zilla cab, and through the Hellwin, because that's what I've kind of tuned my tone to. Uh, the other cabs I could you know do the EQ a little bit differently and make those cabinets sound better, but what I'm going for here is the differences from one to the other. So hopefully you'll be able to hear it and it'll be helpful. But in the meantime, I want to get to some questions that I missed in the original. All right, so the first one comes from our good friend Ids Shear. Um, he says, how many amps are in there by default without buying cab packs and stuff like that? Um, and then he follows up with, I'm wondering, are literally all the amps in the world in there by default or do you have to buy some once you have the Axe FX? I'm going to go minimal here. Oh, I'm shrinking. And what we're going to do, first, for your first answer, you cannot add amplifiers to the Axe FX. Um, maybe it's something you can do with the three, but I don't think so. But all of the amps are built into the product. And as you can see, I mean, it starts at number one. And it scrolls and scrolls and scrolls and ends on number 262. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that there are actually 262 different amps modeled in here. Some of the amps, um, they're modeled separately, the clean and dirty channels. So, um, you know, so where one amp has a clean channel and a dirty channel, that actually maps out to two amps here. Um, that's just the way the Axe FX is kind of designed. Um, but you can't buy amplifiers. Um, you know, even when they're working with Sin to create his tone, they're working off of this one, the 5153 100 watt red amp. That's the, um, that's the amplifier that has the same basic design as um, uh, Sin's Hellwind. That's the amp that comes closest to that. And then, you know, they go into some of the back end settings and stuff to tweak it and make it just like the Hellwind uh, for him. Okay, so it's. There are, you can buy cabinets, you can buy cab packs, uh, you cannot buy effects, and you cannot buy amps. Everything ships in the box. Everything is in the Axe FX unit, except for extra cabs. Okay, Matt Guerrero asks, can you hook up an Axe FX with a real cab? Yes, you can. There's a caveat though. The Axe FX is not an amplifier emulates amplifiers. It, if you want to hook it up to a real cabinet, you need a real power amp as well. You know, the Axe FX has enough to power a headphone, uh, but it's a line out only. So you need a power amp 
and a, and a cabinet. The ideal setup is to have uh, more of a PA style system. They call it FRFR, uh, flat response, full range flat response. Um, and that's basically, it's just like a PA system, okay? If you look over here, what I have is a JBL Eon 612. It's a PA speaker, but it's a self-powered PA speaker. So when I go to the gig, I take that, my Axe FX and the foot pedal, and I'm good to go. Okay, that particular model and a lot like it are like wedges. You know, it's like a monitor. You can put it at, at like a monitor at your feet and use the Axe FX out to go to the front of house to the sound man so he can pump your sound through, you know, house PA and you can use that as your monitor. You can have it behind you, in front of you, on the floor, whatever. You can put it up on a PA stand. It's all good. Um, I have a PA stand. A musician's friend had a, a ridiculous deal. Uh, one of their stupid deals of the day, like uh, a month ago, and it was um, it was a full steel folding PA stand for like 16 bucks, shipped, free shipping. So I mean, for less than it would cost me to put it in a box and ship it, I got the whole thing. So I can take that and I can put it up on the pole and have it at ear level and uh, rock. So hopefully that answers your question. If you want to use the Axe FX with a guitar power amp and cabinet, like you know your own 4x12 speaker, you can do that too. What you would want to do then is you'd want to either leave off or bypass the cab here. So what I would do is I would make this FX loop and hook that into the reverb here and, that, and then use the FX out and bring that into the FX return on my power amp and then run that to the cab. That way, I mean, technically, you're still getting a power amp emulation here and you're using another power amp, but you can still tune to that and work with it. And it's still, you know, I, I did that for, <clears throat> I did that at band practice for six months before I bought the FRFR speaker. So yes, you can do it, yes, it can sound good, but for the maximum versatility, you wanna have more of a PA style system. All right, let's see. BDJ Does asks, does anyone know how to achieve a smooth lead tone with the 6505 plus? My tone sounds fizzy and I can't seem to get it right. Well, let's, let's take a little bit of a look in, uh, in here at the amp settings. If you're fizzy, that's gonna be a lot in your treble range. Now you can either go and you can adjust the treble. Or you can go into the graphic EQ section and you can do some tweaking here. If you're fizzy, you're probably looking at questions or concerns up in the 4K or 8K range. Personally, I like to just, especially on distorted tones, I like to just get rid of the 8K altogether. Um, I bring that down to minus 12 and it gets rid of a lot of stuff that really I don't feel belongs in a guitar set. If I adjust this back up to around zero. <laughs> You see, it takes a little bit of the buzziness out of it, a little bit of the buzzsaw out of it, but still leaves a lot of great meat and a lot of great tone. And if you want to beef up the sound after that, you can go into the 4K and you can bump that up a little bit. So uh, go into the amp settings, the graphic EQ, and you can try pulling out some of that 8K or all of that 8K and uh, see what happens for you. All right. Uh, Silas0403 asks, is the Axe FX as easy to use as the Kemper profiler in live settings? Well, I'll be honest, I have not actually used a Kemper. However, you can see right behind me, there's the foot controller for the Axe FX. It's a foot pedal. That's it. You know, you set it up ahead of time. I've got eight different presets set into mine. It's got another button to mute everything and put it on a tuner. Uh, so your audience doesn't have to hear you tune up and uh, You know, it works like any other pedal board. So uh, is it as easy to use? Yes 
Um, and if you get huge and massive and you've got roadies and stuff, um, all of that can be programmed um, to switch via MIDI. In fact, I, I'm, I know that the guys in Periphery do that um, because there's three guitar players and a bass player and a drummer and they're all syncing up. Um, they've actually, they all play to a click in their in-ears and um, all of their tones for each of them switch on the fly following with the SMTP. I think it's the SMTP um, that, you know, that's programmed into the songs. That's a lot of programming ahead of time, so you never have to step on pedals. Um, but they are very, you know, meticulous and methodical about all of that. Um, those of us who live like mere mortals, uh, we don't we don't do that. But I've got feet, and I only need one of them to switch pedals. And as you can also see over there, there's an expression pedal attached to it, which nine times out of ten is set up as a wah. And um, if you look in here and you could see there's you know there's more than a half a dozen different kinds of wah pedal um, you know you get into delays you've got all these different kinds of delays and the same goes for everything you know flangers there's all these different kinds of flangers and they're all programmable okay so that's that that was all the questions that I wanted to get to so let me go ahead and switch over to um, I think this is the one that I wanted to be on. No, maybe it's 51. Go to the cab. And okay, so here we have built in stock cab number 108. This is a 4x12 loaded with vintage 30s. And it's mixed uh, for or by uh, John Petrucci. And uh, I've got, as you can see down here, I've got the R121 ribbon mic attached to it. So I'll play a couple of different pieces. Uh, I'm going to probably play them sloppy. It's morning. I'm not warmed up. I'm also kind of hungry. And I'm sitting down, which is not how I usually play. But we'll start with, uh, we'll play some actual Avenged Sevenfold. Go figure. Let's go from there. Let's go into. Uh... All right, and then uh, you guys will know this one. I think I'm a little bit out of tune on that low D, but we'll keep going. Where are we going? Uh... All right, so... There's a few, and let's see, let me see. I always forget how to play that last bit. <laughs> All right, 
So that's that, and that is with the stock uh, F108, uh, the stock cabinet. So let's go ahead and move on to a different cabinet. All right, this is the ML Labs Zilla, also with the Celestion V30s, also with the Royer 121 mic. Uh, this is from the Misha pack that, uh, that I was using, and we'll basically play through the same things. <laughs> a second and check my tuning here just to give you an idea how the tuner works you see the sound is all gone but yeah I'm a little sharp there <laughs> a little sharp there too around this time of year this guitar always gets a little wonky just with the weather and um, when the heat kicks on. Uh, we don't use a whole lot of heat down here in southern Arizona, but uh, it does get a little cooler and uh, we need to have a little bit of that every now and then. And so that's being not nice with my guitars. Okay, and then... Uh Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can do that again. All right, a little bit better. Uh, still a little wonky at the top, but it's all good. All right, so that's that. Let's move on to Mr. Sin's cabs. So the first one we're going to look at Ah, why is that there? That no unlink. First one we're gonna look at is let's get the uh, let's get the boner cab in there. I think I like the boner one twenty one A.
All right, so that's the uh, the four by twelve boner cab, um, and let's go ahead and then and get back to the hell one. So once again, as you can see. Um, Hellwind 4x12 uh, with the Royer 121 microphone and all other settings being identical. Right away, you can hear this a little bit deeper, right? It's got a little bit more bass to it. Now, I want to remind everyone again, just because this cabinet may sound... My tone is tuned to this cabinet and to a lesser extent to the Zilla because I did change it a little bit when I moved to this cabinet. There were certain artifacts and things that I heard in the Zilla that I always heard in the Zilla, and when I tried uh, the Hellwin, those artifacts were gone, and I felt better. So, um, so I, you know, did a little tuning, a little EQing here and there. Um, any of these cabinets can be made to sound mostly good. What I'm again illustrating is the difference between each of them and how they sound. But an amplifier, there, there's so many different factors in a tone um, that finding your tone can come from a number of different ways. So, um, you know, just think about that. All right, keep that in mind. All right, so let's do a little, uh, little nightmare. <laughs> So there you have it. I uh, hope this was helpful. Uh, if you have any other questions or any other concerns, any other anything, uh, leave it in the comments or send me an email. Uh, I think it's cookingwithcaptained at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram. I think I'm guitars in AZ, as in Arizona, and search my name, find me wherever the hell you want. Uh, but hope this was helpful. Uh, I want to thank. Sinister Gates for coming out to uh, to the live stream that I did a few weeks ago. It was awesome having him there, asking questions, uh, poking around, uh, offering bits here and there, and uh, it was just really cool having him there. And if you are uh, coming here not from the Sinister Gates school, go and check out SinGates.com. S Y N G A T E S dot com. Um, <clears throat> beginner to expert lessons. Uh, with Sin and his dad um, and a great community 
and uh, just lots of awesomeness and it is all free 100% free and there's a uh, community there uh, which I and many others are a part of uh, including a lot of the people whose questions I answered today um, and it's a it's an environment of positivity it doesn't matter if you're brand new if you post a video saying hey you know how does this sound you're gonna get positive feedback you're gonna get um, you're gonna feel good about yourself um, and there aren't too many places on the internet and believe me I've been on the internet since long before it was called the internet uh, I think I got online for the very first time in 1984 1984 kids um, it was the first time I was online and um, it doesn't take long for the internet uh, and any internet communities to devolve into a poisoned well um, Sin and Papa and um, some of the great and active voices in that community in the forum um, make sure that it continues to be a safe place for people to learn and share so come on out, SinGates.com, whether you're a fan of Avenged Sevenfold or not. Uh, if you want to learn guitar, if you want to be better at guitar, if you want to share the knowledge you have about guitar with others, come on down, set up a profile, and start posting. Join the fun. All right? Thanks, everyone. Thanks for coming to Cooking with Captain Ed. We'll see you on the next time.